quick pace through this first four and a half minutes. See if they're aware of the seven seconds inside off the glass. There's two for Andrew Sims. Sims directing traffic up top. Well, Mack for Sims. Works the baseline and score the basket and the foul. Team 10th best. In the NE10, lighten it up so far as Sim scores down the other end. Through the baseline, three seconds to shoot. Fall away, won't go. Offensive rebound, though, for the Skyhawks. And a three ball thrown in by Isaiah Burnett right in front of Scott Burrell. Out muscled by Reds of Patrick's. And a block by Burnett. Oh, that was nice on Sean James. Out of bounds to the Owls, I believe. Down Hanson. Straightaway shows. Owen spins and scores. All the way through. Can't finish. And the rebound away. Now Seaforth. To the wing. Three ball. Sean James got it. Almost 15 minutes. Now Benigni. Falling away. Got it. He is fourth best in the NE10, averaging six assists for a game to go along with his own 14 for a game. Now Sims, oh, that's pretty. So Sims has missed two free throws. Offensive rebound, though, grabbed by Isaiah Burnett. To choose, and Owen chose, knocks down a three. Back outside, Josh Mack inside. Oh, nobody home, and that's the easiest two all season into a Sims will get. Final 32 seconds of the first half. Sims on the block with Waters. The senior against the freshman, no contest. First half. Old shot, good percentages in the first 20 minutes. Here's Bennett again to the basket for two. And he has found a home inside. Now, nice look, McGill. And answering is Andrew Sims, and he's got 17. Sims, baseline on Gutowski, drops it off inside Bonsu. Back outside, straightaway, three ball down. Bennett. Oh, he got his pocket pick from behind that time by Josh Mack. Here's Josh the other way and scores. He does not shoot well from the outside. Uh, that's exactly the shot that they'll give you is that wing shot. Waters. Wide open Bonsu. Knocks down a three ball. Mellis steps through. Instead goes back outside, and the three ball won't go. Mellis, another offensive rebound. Shows is open, knocks down a three. Trying to set up Sims on the block. Trying to muscle his way in on Waters. Does, and score the basket and the foul. Mellis looking for Sims. Mellis trying to drive through. Got it to the corner. Three ball thrown in deep in the corner by Owen Shows, who's got 16. Facing up on Waters, here he comes to the baseline. Got it to the corner for Josh Mack, who floats in a three. Sims trying to lean on Waters. There's Sims to the baseline. Stripped, but it comes to Mellis, right place, right time. Tried to find Waters. Back the other way come the Skyhawks. Here's Sims. To the corner, high, arcing three, wow. Oh, it shows, I don't know if I've ever seen one that high. 19 for shows. Yeah, the adjustments the coaching staff made so far have proven uh, very successful. Oh, it shows. 22 now for shows. Coleman the other way. Oh, nice bullet pass inside from Coleman to Rezapachuk for two. As the clock counts down. And there's your horn, and the Skyhawks, 15 points better than Southern Connecticut State. Andrew, have a seat. How's it going? I'm doing just great. How about you? You uh, Did I see you wave your coach off there in the last couple of minutes? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I did. I, uh, <laughs> I rolled my ankle. He thought I tweaked it a little bit, and I was just like, I'm good. I, I want to finish out this Let game. Let me play. With Let me play. Yeah. You've been, especially in the last two games, you've really found your stride. You had... If I remember, it was 23 points in that loss on Wednesday at Pace, and then I had you for 26 tonight. What's the difference? Um, I think just coming off the injury, uh, I was able to just find myself, relax a little bit. But honestly, it's my team and, my, and the coaches, you know. Um, they're finding me. They're giving me great looks. Um, they're continuing to find me, and 
Um, hopefully we can turn this thing around and start winning more games here. How has this team been able to navigate this whole COVID nightmare? It's just every day you don't know what's next. And how do, how do you how do you address that both not only just staying in shape, mm -hmm. but also psychologically just not knowing that you're going to get a text message from somebody saying yeah. we're not playing? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. Everybody has to deal with it right now. Um, but our coaches are doing a good job. They're keeping us engaged, keeping us ready, game ready, because obviously we never know. Games would get canceled um, the day of. Like we saw it happen with the women's team. Uh, you know, we're just trying to stay engaged and stay ready at all times for the next game and stay laser focused. Did you do some upper body work in the offseason? Because, man, oh, man, yeah, you were muscling. You were doing a lot of that. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. That was good. Thank you. It was fun to watch. I'll let Thank you go. You. Appreciate Congratulations. Well you. done. I see uh, Andrew Sims waving you off in the last two minutes of the game. <laughs> I saw him go down his ankles, and he's had some ankle stuff this year yeah. and in his career, and I was like, no, not with what we've been dealing with going right. through, and obviously, you know, he was playing so good, and that's, we don't need any of that. Knock on whatever wood is around, so, but yeah, that's, that was, you know, scared that it happened at the end, but he, he was fantastic, just phenomenal, um, how good he was in the post, and um, you know, they didn't have an answer for him, and he was just, he was reading the game, he was scoring, he was even finding guys, and he was fantastic. Just you know, Brian fantastic. Buckley mentioned it early on, he said, if you can't, if you don't double him, he's just going to go to town all night on you. Yeah, and that's what it, we, we actually, at halftime, we expected, we prepped our guys in the locker room, that we thought the double was going to be coming, but, you know, um, I think they just decided to play it through, and, you know, it, obviously Andrew just kept going, which was great. A lot of upper body strength, I'll tell you what, because I never, I, he was doing a lot of leaning on a lot of people, and uh, he looked as fresh as could be, even just yeah. sitting beside us a couple of minutes ago. He's really rounded himself he's, back in shape in spite he's of the starting injuries. To, yeah, you yeah. know, he, he's, he's really worked in the weight room, um, and it, it's allowed him to do some of these things. You know, when he was a younger kid, you guys have watched, you know, we've yep. all watched the talent, the potential, the skill, the, you know, it was all there, and he, not that he was, he was still a good player, but now, obviously, becoming an older kid and knowing what, the behind the scenes stuff helps to be able to do those things. Um, he was fantastic. And, you know, they, I, we were at, like, they were leaning a little bit because they kind of had to. They were trying to figure out how to guard him. But Andrew just fought through and, you know, found a way and w it was just fantastic. If I'm not mistaken, you went 10 deep tonight, maybe, maybe 11. I don't know if I had 10. You know, it, by design? No, it was, um, it's funny. Earlier today, um, we had shooter on this morning and Miles Hans was like, hey, I'm going to give it a go today. He hasn't practiced. And we were talking as a staff, we were like, our rotations. And I felt, I was like, they're going to be a little funky and they're going to be a little weird because Jackson is trying to get back and playing and obviously, yep. you know, he's on his knee brace and trying to recover and trying to get back into it. And we had a lot of guys, you know, because uh, we've had guys that have been really contributing and helping a guy like Emmanuel Bonsu, you know, yep. Chris Mellis has been playing fantastic as of lately. I got to stop you on Chris Mellis because Buck and I were talking about that too, that I think he scored two points, but boy, he had a lot of plays where as he just kept the ball alive. Big of an impact on yeah. that game up in the air, both sides of the ball, yeah. you know, and, and that's where, you know, I think for him developmentally, it, just understand, he, he's such a great player, such a hard-nosed kid, and, you know, the ball isn't dropping for him, but still, I think that's where, you know, as coaches, you see, he's affecting this game in so many ways without that ball dropping, yeah. and for players out there, it's not just about scoring, and he's capable of scoring too, you know, but it's he just had such an impact on the game, just rebounding the ball. He, anytime he came out of the game, it was like, all right, we got to figure out how we're going to rebound the ball. And, you know, with Sims as our yeah. only big in the in the post there. So um, he was great. But, that, you know, going back to rotations, we knew we just the, the amount of guys that were capable of playing and that were trying to get back in our rotation, get back going. It was, uh, it was I felt <laughs> trying to find a rotation which wasn't there, but trying to keep guys playing, which was it was really hard to do as a coach. Up four at halftime, what was the difference between the first and second half? No, I thought our, you know, our opening three or four minutes of the game where they got out early, um, we just didn't have the energy that we had talked about going into the game. And then we started guarding and we started, you know, finding a rhythm offensively as our defense got going again. And I thought we really guarded. You know, I thought that was our second half. Uh, we just, things were tough. You know, Lyra Bennett, their point guard, got, he got to his left hand too much tonight and we were trying yeah. to, you know, take him away and just sit on a scouting report that we didn't execute fully, but collect, I thought we really guarded them, you know, and that, that allowed us to score, that allowed us to, you know, Andrew in the post and, and just playing, and then when you get multiple stops you're and you score and, you know, it starts to build and compound and, and go then, and we found ourselves up 20 with, you know, eight to go. Five turnovers. 
Yeah. Uh, and I, mean, I think there was one in the first half. We had one half. in the half. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's great. Uh, if we can find a way to keep doing that, you know, obviously we haven't done that the entire year. But that's, I think that's, you know, we, you and I talked about it the other week. And, uh, and for us, with the injuries, with coming out of the COVID pause and all these injuries that we're dealing with, uh, my plan, let's get our group back and for the stretch run. Let's, I don't know if we're going to be fully healthy. I don't think there's any team healthy no. in the country. But healthier than some of the significant injuries we've had. And let's build this group back together to try to go finish this thing strong. And I think if we're healthy, if we're, or if everyone's able and, and there and we're playing and collecting, you know, our effort levels, I think we're a pretty good team. So that's what we're trying to build back towards that right now. You like what the NE10 is doing with the playoff? Format. I do. Yeah, I'm very happy. Um, part of those discussions myself, I'm, I'm the league chair, so I got I get all the phone calls. I get all, oh, I don't know. I, <laughs> I got too much on my plate. Um, but you know what? We thought we felt, and, and I felt, and our all of our coaches, which we we're really happy that the league and the administrators agreed to it. It wasn't fair to these kids that yeah. you know you, you may not make postseason play because oh you didn't win enough games. Well. Why didn't you win enough games? You didn't play because of COVID right. and shutdowns and postponements. So we just felt like the best thing is giving these student athletes an experience and opportunity, and that's what it's all about. So let's let them all have an opportunity to postseason play. So that, we're th I'm very happy and very pleased that that's what the direction that you know it all went, and uh, it puts the kids first, and that's the, the most important thing. Off to Springfield next week. Yep, yep. AIC doesn't get easier. Their physicality, their toughness, and then you know St. Rose here after that. It's just every single night, and it's funny. Chris Mellis, you know, as you mentioned his name and all of our young guys, in conversations the other day, just how good this league is. And there was a comment, man, every single night it's against so and so, and it's yeah. the, it's that's the league, and now it's AIC, and it's it's that tough, it's that good every single night. All right, coach, well done, congratulations. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Chris Krause, the head coach of the Stonehill men's team, a win tonight.